Welcome back. I'm joined by Willis Naluenge from Kingdom Securities as we discuss the tourism sector. And in the first section of this conversation, we were just talking about the macros and the developments within the sector. But now I want us to do a deep dive into the two stocks that are affiliated to tourism in the stock market. Uh, number one is TPS Serena. It is in the red. In fact, it is the biggest loser today in the stock market. Um, it doesn't seem to be corresponding to the good news that uh, you uh, were alluding to um, earlier in the day. Does this have something to do with its fundamentals or uh, does it have something to do with Airbnb? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do. Oh, by, by the way, I've, I've just seen the figures today and I noted that uh, they are they the top losers, but last week they were on the top, uh, top gainers. So it's more of a, an up and down scenario. Yeah. Now let's talk about uh, TPS and unfortunately, unfortunately, when you look at the figures, uh, they, are in the, they are in the red. They have been in the red for, uh, this is the third half, the last, that is um, June they were in the red the third half. But basically it's purely because of uh, the operations were closed down due to um, COVID, COVID, COVID issues. But at the end of the day, you'll note that it has, the, the negative, what is it called, the loss has reduced over the period of time from, uh, from 700 million in uh, H1 2020 to about 500 million in H1, uh, 20, H1 2021. If you look at the full year in 2020, it was way better than what half year was. So we've seen a slowdown in terms of their negative performance. And we hope that by the time the tourism sector recovers in general, then the, industry, the, the company itself will recover. And it's not only for TF TPS Arena, it's across uh, the hotel industries. We've seen uh, many uh, hotels shutting down some of the operations. There's yeah. uh, unfortunately here in Kenya, even in Nairobi, up a hill, there are a few hotels that have shut down completely in terms of operation. So even TPS Arena has done very good considering that again, they did open a hotel during uh, the COVID period. So they still see positivity at the end of the day. And when the figures turn around, then the price will tend to go upwards. So uh, they are up active in uh, DRC. They've uh, they re returned into operations in Tanzania and Uganda. Rwanda Hotel is really performing very well. So we'll see a turnaround in terms of their revenue performance and operational performance at the, as, as, as the things change along the way. I was looking at their uh, statements and their liabilities versus assets, the net worth is very slim. It's not what I expected for a very long-standing company like uh, TPS Serena, because I, I think the assets uh, at, amount to around 15 billion, and uh, their uh, liabilities amount to around 6 billion. I mean, it's still, there's still a good net worth there, but isn't that a bit high? Yeah, the, the slowdown has been for, from the, from the the losses have been they've been able to, so it has been eating into their it has been eating into their equity equity holding yeah. but if you look at it very well you will see that uh, there is still positivity in terms of that uh, their liabilities again uh, remember that uh, the, 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 the the expansion hasn't been cash cash wise they've been growing that uh, growth in terms of uh, performance of uh, the the overall overall um, global trend they've been growing these markets using debt so those are some of the things that will push the liability up yeah so positivity on that at the end of the day we'll see that when this market recovers then that stock will tend to go upward fair enough because uh, you know i think Serena is the biggest brand in the tourism sector. Uh, so I would uh, imagine that, well, when I look at the accounts, the books of accounts, uh, the books rather, uh, I would be going away with a smile. But anyway, uh, they expanded to DRC as you had earlier mentioned. Um, does this mean that they have a lot of confidence uh, in the year, in the coming year for um, a recovery, a full recovery? Yes, this, this going to DRC was not a, a, a COVID-related expansion. This is a long-term expansion. And if you look at that... Yeah, but they went in at a time when everybody else is shunning away from the markets. Yes. When you look at it um, on overall, they had a plan. The only thing they did is implement their plans with the time that they, ha they, they are done. So the only negative thing we can pick from there is that with, it may take longer for that hotel to break even, 
but the structure is already there, so no more investment in it. Yeah. So it's, it's a long-term investment at the end of the day. So the question is, how fast are they going to break even in that particular market? Mm. Remember that, uh, again, that region is getting peace along the way. There's a peace coming up. There has been very heavy uh, tourism towards that uh, the tropical forest environment, and especially wind, the gorillas and the baboons. So those, those are the markets they're trying to tap into. Uh, tap into uh, that. So, uh, and they know that those people who, who, who visit these countries, they tend to visit the whole region. They just don't come to Kenya and stay in Kenya. Most people are now traversing in, uh, in the East African region. So you yeah. land in Kenya, uh, you end up in Tanzania, a few days later you're in Rwanda, and then you close in DRC before you fly back to Kenya and fly out. So if that target so Serena is wants least, to make sure they get yes. the, the so whole when of you that enter in, uh, When you book in Serena, Kenya, you tend to stay in the whole of uh, that, that, uh, that region. Kenya always, on its part as well, doesn't seem to reflect the optimism in the sector. Uh, optimism in the sector is competition uh, taking away the flight from the pride of Africa. I've noted, Odiambo, uh, you're trying to to beat up Kenyan, Kenyan, Kenyan companies. Very I'm not much. beating them up. I'm just well, making globally. An globally, the market is bad. Global for, for, for airlines. Yeah, airlines market is bad. Correct. When you look at it, passengers load is down 65%. Uh, Globally. Willis, we are reviewing the tourism and travel sector. Yes. And we are reviewing it with an eye that it is going upwards. Yes. Correct? Yes. However, our listed stocks in that sector are not reflecting this reality. Okay. I'm trying to establish why. Because the Global market is bad, so even no, that. No, no, no. Just, just let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, let me finish. Let me finish. You, you, you cannot give the global excuse in, when the local context is, in fact, giving you positive vibes. Let me say this globally, passenger capacity has been down 65 percent. Cargo has improved, but it's still below the 2019, the 2019 um, figures. figures. Now, Africa, and I'm not talking about Kenya. Africa contributes about 1.4% of the total global aviation sector. One point. So if the 98.8% is being affected negatively, what do you think the 1.4% will happen? It will tend to have a negative flow. Now, now, when you come to Africa again, Kenya is about number three or four. If the big boys in Africa are getting a beating, then you don't expect the, whether it's positive news or negative news that KQ will get a beating on that. Let's, okay? And I'm not here trying to defend KQ on its own. I'm just trying to say the industry itself, global is industry, struggling. is struggling. In Africa, we've seen about eight carriers going into bankruptcy, including one of our major, major carriers from one of our very well uh, performing countries, especially in tourism sector. South Africa is struggling. When you look at it, those, those countries are struggling. Africa, we are down 53.6% in terms of, in terms of um, capacity load. Now, when you come to Kenya, and unfortunately, Kenya, we got a beating. Remember, Kenya is one of the transition, it's called transit, uh, transit Country. hubs. And we depend very high, heavily on transit hubs. So if bands across Kenya or the region in Kenya, whether Kenya is open or not, if East Africa is closed, whether Kenya is open or not, Kenya will not get any market because it's a more of a transit, uh, transit uh, country. It includes serving West Africa. So if West Africa is closed, my friend, Kenya will get a beating. That is number one. Let's go to KQ. <laughs> now, with KQ, we've seen a few things. They're down in terms of uh, available seats. Remember that when uh, they had financial problems, they had to offload some of, uh, some of these uh, aircraft. airlines, uh, aircraft. That was one. They've down, they're down about 36% in terms of uh, seat, seat, seat. Available seats. Now, even with those available seats, with the COVID environment, they're again down about 34%. But let's look at the positive side, which we are, uh, you're tending to point at. Their cargo is up 36%. Remember, they converted some of their passenger planes into cargo planes. But still, we are getting a beating from regional airlines. So what can we talk about uh, KQ? Now, unfortunately, KQ has shared part of the market share to the regional airlines. Number two, KQ has been a private airline for a long time, and, and that's the reason why uh, the previous management was trying to fight into nationalization and creating a KQ hub in Kenya so that it can be able to compete 
with the likes of Etihad and uh, Qatar and Emirates, who which have hubs in their in, in their regions, in their countries. Number four, these com countries are well financed by their governments. Unfortunately, we do finance KQ, but even the financing we are giving them, uh, is it adequate for them to be able to turn around? to turn around the, the performance. So you are in support of the efforts by the government to, quote-unquote, refinance KQ? The efforts of the government, the management, they're, they're, they're doing something positive in terms, in terms of uh, trying to revive, uh, in terms to revive KQ. But unfortunately, every time they do one step, they get, they, they get like five steps ah. back. So when they, they, they restructured Kenya Airways, COVID came in. Yeah. So that is negative, negative five again. So every time they try to push it forward, you'll tend to see something comes up and, and pushes KQ back. But are they on the right track? With the capacity that they have, they are trying their best. It is negative capacity. So it's like, it's like trying to fight with your hands tied uh, on, to your on back. back. Yes. So <laughs> they will continue to struggle. Yeah. It will affect uh, their performance in the market. But again, until we, they find that fine-tuning in terms of the operations, and, and, and look at it very well, they are negative at the operations profit level. The moment you are negative on that, you need a lot of incentives to be able to turn around your performance. So KQ will continue suffering, whether tourism is positive or not, until they are able to restructure the whole thing again. Uh, thank you very much. What I hear is that there is recovery but it will take time to reflect on the stocks we are analyzing. It will take time, yes. No, you should have said that instead of accusing me falsely for making an, observ an observation. <laughs> but there are new brands in the market that I think would make some awesome IPOs. And I don't think they are also in the red. Brands like Pride Inn, uh, brands like uh, Centrum, uh, brands like uh, Best Western. Um, why can't we have these guys come and just give us an APO and give us a piece of, uh, of the goodness in some of these hotels? You've thrown names that are global names, so you might start thinking about does their mother country want to list uh, part of their branches into... into, into but Buckley is listed when it was still a global brand and it listed here. Yes, but remember that there are better incentives back then to list. What I can say about this brand is that Kenyan market is still growing, and especially with regards to the bed capacity. Have we reached optimum? We're still way, way below capacity, um, especially global standard capacity. We are trying to expand. And, and, and like you've said, there are very many hotels that have come, five-star hotels that have come yeah, into the market. beautiful there hotels. Are very many hotels that are still going, trying to penetrate into the Kenyan market. So are they seeing probable upside in the market before doing the listing? Yes, there is. So until they accept that upside in terms of recover, um, what's it called, Re recovering the investment, they might not be able to list in this market, considering that, again, you want to enter the market when you're at your optimum, not mm -hmm. when you're down and struggling to go up. The moment you you enter any any market, uh, unlike tech companies, you see tech companies, what we don't see is what we buy into. Their R&D is what we buy into. Unfortunately, when you come to a service industry, you must have a track record of your performance for anybody to look at look at it. So if you if that's the reason why tech companies can come in with negative profitability and, and their value still, builds up. Because yeah. they will keep on telling you we have a new product coming up which is will revolutionize the technology. But unfortunately for such uh, service industry you must have a track record to be able to put it in the market to tell the market that this is where I'm coming from, this is where you're going and this is how you'll be able to recover your return at the end of the day. So I continue being patient. Perhaps one one time I'll be able to buy Pride in. Yes, in the market. Okay. Would you invest in the two counters? I know I've had, in fact, KQ should just give you some complimentary flight to uh, go to Pride in Mombasa <laughs> or TPS Serena should give you uh, a, a holiday there. But would you invest in the two uh, companies that are listed in travel and tourism and why? KQ. Unfortunately, it's suspended, so not much activity can be able to do that. But it has remained one of those uh, temperature, you can't measure the temperature. One day they've done this, the price has gone up. The next day, the government has said something different, the price has plunged. The next day, these, so KQ, I remain very speculative on it, very, very speculative on it. 
Uh, TPS Serena, I will positively enter. The market at 14 shillings, I will be, uh, and be patient until the time when they turn around. Remember that this is a company that even gave dividends when they had negative profit, uh, uh, negative, uh, they, they had made losses, they yeah. gave dividends. So this uh, TPS Serena, to me, I will buy and hold it for until t end of 2025. KQ, that's like three years away. Three years. K K TPS Serena, I'll hold it for, uh, for, for three years. KQ, I'll remain for it being speculative. It can give you very big, re good returns, but speculative. Yeah. Yes. That has been quite a conversation. Thank you very much, Willis, for joining us again. And I look forward to seeing you again one of these fine days as we talk about industries. I, I promise this time around I will not uh, make observations about uh, um, you know, companies that are underperforming in sectors that are performing very well. This has been Markets Today, Monday edition, when we talk about securities and the market at large, uh, just doing an analysis of specific counters. And I've been joined by my uh, friend from Kingdom Securities, Willis Naluenge. Um, it's been a great conversation, but we have to end it there. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 4 p.m. for another edition of Markets Today. I'm your host, Odi Amburamogi, and I'll leave you with a snapshot of the currencies of the day. Goodbye.